Well, hi friends, my name is Miss Kostakos and I'm going to be reading a really, really interesting book for you today. It's called When Picasso Met Matisse and they are two of my favorite artists. There once was a young pig named Picasso. While the other piglets rolled in the mud, and play games, Pegasso painted. He painted anything and everything and in a most unusual way. At the same time, there once was a young bull named Mutis. Mutis was not like the other bulls. He wasn't interested in bullfighting. Mutis was happy only when he painted pictures and he painted big, bold, bright pictures. In time, word of Pegaso's talent spread throughout the big provinces. Soon, art-loving pigs from all over lined up to buy his creations. At the same time, Mutis was getting famous in the cattle community. There weren't many households that didn't own a mooster piece. Pegaso and Mutis were becoming art superstars. But this came with a price. Everybody wanted to see them. Art buyers, art sellers, art students, art historians, art groupies. It was an art attack. One day, Pegaso got fed up and said, I'm tired of this noisy pig pen. At the same time, Mutis declared, I'm sick of this crowded cow town. Meaning a change, they both decided to look for a peaceful place where they could paint without distractions. So each of the two artists looked far and wide for the perfect spot. Pegaso found a lovely farm looking towards the east. Mutis found a handsome farm facing the west. After Pegaso moved in, he went to introduce himself to his neighbor across the road. At the same time, Mutis went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. That is how Pegaso met Mutis, and coincidentally, that is how Mutis met Pegaso. At first, Pegaso and Mutis were friendly and welcomed each other as neighbors, but soon things began to change. It started one day when Pegaso criticized one of Mutis's paintings. Then Mutis made fun of Pegaso's. Mutis called Pegaso an art hog. Then Pegaso called Mutis a mad cow. Mutis quipped, you paint like a two-year-old. Pegaso retorted, you paint like a wild beast. Mutis raged, your colors look like mud. Pegaso spat, your paintings look like color by numbers. And things got really out of hand. It was a modern art mess. Pegaso stormed off into his house. That Mutis doesn't like my art, he huffed. Well, I'll show him. And Mutis bullied his way into his house. I'll give that Pegaso something he can really criticize, he snorted. Then a full scale feud erupted but it was, a must, it was a most unusual battle. Armed with ladders and buckets of paint, Mutis launched the first attack. He started at dawn. By the end of the evening, he had succeeded in transforming the outside of his house into a monster-sized masterpiece. Not to be overdone, Pegaso fired up his paintbrushes and in full view of the enemy counterattacked. He turned his farm into a huge and outrageous pork of art. The two artists then retreated into their houses and pulled down the shades. Pegaso certainly didn't want to look out his window and stare at Lutis. And Lutis had no desire to give his rooms a view of Pegaso.
This presented a problem, and there seemed to be only one solution. Without a word to each other, Fagasso and Matisse each began to build a huge wooden fence down the middle of their road. At first, Pagasso and Matisse seemed satisfied. Both artists went back to painting by themselves. But after a while, Pagasso was surprised to find that he missed that bullheaded Matisse. At the same time, Matisse found his studio empty without the presence of pig-headed Pagasso. Pagasso pondered that Matisse isn't such a bad artist. He has some interesting ideas. Matisse moaned, that Pagasso may not paint like me, but he knows what he's doing. However, being naturally pig-headed and bull-headed, neither artist knew how to apologize to the other. So they did what they do best. They let their paintbrushes do the talking. Pagasso painted on one side of the fence and Mutis painted on the other. Each worked until they were exhausted. It was strangely quiet when they were done. Then, curious to see what Mutisse had been doing, Pagasso sprinted around to the other side. At the same time, Mutisse galloped over to Pagasso's side. The silence was broken as the two artists began laughing at their amazing work of art. From that day on, Pegasso and Mutisse became friends. They happily took down the fence and shared their different views. A few months later, a big museum bought the fence. Pegasso called his side when Pegasso met Mutisse. Mutisse called his side when Mutisse met Pegasso. The critics called it incredible. The end.